Next Curve. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. I'm Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and today I have my very good friend and fellow analyst, Roy Chua, founder and principal analyst of Avid Think, joining me to talk about the path to autonomous edge. And specifically, we'll go into we'll go over the distinction between automation and autonomous as it pertains to the network and beyond. And uh, so, Roy, great to have you as always. Thanks for jumping on again. I know this is a topic that you and I both kind of thought would be a fun one to uh, discuss. Um, and so why don't you briefly introduce Avid Think and what you guys do, um, short of all the wonderful, the, uh, all the wonderful stuff that you guys do. So take the moment. Well, absolutely. Thank you again for the opportunity, Leonard. Always good to talk to you. Um, as, as famous uh, as analysts as, as you, um, so we're, <laughs> we're glad to be here. Um, but Evan thinks. Okay, so. I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I won't. But <laughs> well, yeah. So we're a small little analyst company um, here, and we're, we cover technology infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, we used to be part of STX Central, which I co-founded in 2012. Yeah. Um, in 2018, we spun out the research group as an independent unit. And so we're purely an analyst firm focused on infrastructure. And we cover things like you know 5G infrastructure, mm. IoT infrastructure, private 5G, uh, SD1 and SASE, mm. um, things of that nature. Um, and what we do is analysts look for the usual suspects, so the Fortune 500 big infrastructure vendors, um, mm -hmm. a couple of mid-sized companies, and uh -huh. the carriers and enterprises as well. So yeah. it's, uh, it's an exciting field. It's an interesting field, and yes. we enjoy doing it. It is, and I, I really appreciate the work that you and the Avid Think team do. i um, been a big fan for quite some time, so um, thank you so much for being on. Um, so. What we're going to be talking about today, there's going to be four things that we'll chat about, um, four discussion points that we're going to try to hit. First is, um, what is the difference between automation and autonomy? Then we'll talk about what is the criticality of autonomous infrastructure. And then we will talk about the prerequisites to intelligent automation and beyond, or if you want to call it autonomous automation. Uh, and then we'll cap things off with, uh, uh, um, you know, maybe a little chat about how to prioritize or how operators will want to think, uh, prioritize value along this long path to autonomy. And I don't mean to qualify it as long so, uh, so early on in the discussion, but, uh, you know, hint, hint. Wink, wink. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I think you might as well set the stage for reality, right? As yeah. Hype, yeah. Right? I yeah. think there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, yeah. Well, you know, um, yeah. sometimes uh, reality is a good thing to start off with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, I think the, the problem historically has been that in technology, we tend to overhype things, right, collectively. Yeah. And then yeah. you set expectations and everyone jumps on it because they all think it's cool. Then they all get upset because it doesn't deliver what they want in the time frame they thought they would get it in. And right. then they walk away prematurely uh -huh. before we all realize the full benefits of that, right? And, right. and hence, you know, the, the Gardner hype cycle and all the usual crossing the chasm, right? Uh -huh. the adoption yeah. cycle, all those things, right? That is human behavior, right? And right. so I think right. if we can just just tamp down that little curve and hopefully you don't go into overdrive and drop where in fact you just you know make your way there one step at a time that's the hope right that that's our role anyway or at least part of our role, right? <laughs> well you know it's really interesting that you said that uh because that's that is how things happen nothing happens overnight and i think that's one of the issues with setting expectations too high and not focusing on that first step. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, but why don't we start with the first discussion point here, which is what is the difference between automation and autonomy? And the reason why we, I, I think 
you and I mul- mul- mutually thought this is going to be an interesting thing to discuss is because we oftentimes hear these two terms used interchangeably and um, they're not exactly the same thing, right? Yeah, actually, they're, yeah, they're far from the same thing, aside from the spelling being different. Um, I think, you know, fundamentally, you know, a- automation is taking a task that, that you usually perform manually and then have and then codifying that that task and then having the system perform the task um, through a click of a button you know scripted you know at a specific time of day based on some kind of trigger mechanism right so it's a reduction of operational uh, task uh, through sort of program programmatic approach right to to to, a, to whatever it is that you want to do right so you can automate um, the deployment uh, of, of new devices, you can automate the configuration of new devices. And once you know what you want, um, you can codify it, program it, and have it run over and over and over again at scale, you know, n number of times without having a human sitting there at a keyboard and typing it over and over again, right? That's that's the automation part of things. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and you know, it, it typically start, starts off with some pretty simple tasks, right? Which mm-hmm. it, it are also typically of high value if you're able to automate them. And then increasingly, as um, you know, and technology has advanced, especially around um, you know, uh, thanks to software and virtualization of hardware, we're looking at new uh, um, opportunities to uh, automate more broadly and um, to automate more complex functions, right? And operations. That's correct. And then, and eventually, um, once you get an automation in there and you build in the system ability to do repetitive tasks, then the goal long-term at least, you know, the hope is that maybe at some point, the system can operate on its own, even without someone to kick off the process, without any triggers, itself decides when certain things need to be done, right? And that's the autonomous network or the autonomy, right? Not necessarily network, but system itself, right? The ability on its own, right? To to figure out what the right thing to do with little to no intervention and still achieve whatever business goals or system goals that were set ahead of time. And usually there's some injection of machine learning and AI and heuristics in there, right? Because there's or self-healing, right? Those are the words that you normally hear right. around right. that autonomy, right? So right. I think that's the way to, 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 to look at sort of the both both systems, right? That's one is automation and right. the other one is autonomy, which can be an end goal as you automate, 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 and add more intelligence at close loop, add the ability to understand that the high level goals and then you can achieve that, right? Now, there's no autonomous networks really in full existence today, not not full definition, but there are networks that are getting there or in process of getting there. Right, right. right. And yeah, I, I think the net goal here, or the ultimate goal is to have an adaptive um, an adaptive network or adaptive infrastructure that's, that's able correct. to intelligently react mm-hmm. to events or um, changes in its environment, its operating That's condition, and, right. and then uh, that reaction being uh, hopefully somewhat in the realm of optimized, <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that's the hope, right? That's the right. hope. Right, yeah, it, yeah. It detects a failing system and mm-hmm. it routes its way around it. It detects a failing compute unit and it migrates a workload off before any damage is done onto a spare unit if available, right? and and it brings it back up again, um, or it it watches a you know um, for faults in a remote location, and it uh, it it predicts that something bad's going to happen. It orders replacement for itself, right? You know something along those lines, right? Um, that's Absolutely the right. And I think the the um, key system construct that needs to be implemented is what you mentioned prior, which is the closed loop. Right, that closed that control, the, the closed control loop, and exactly. that starts with uh, really having that cognitive component in the beginning, where you have, um, uh, you know, um, 
awareness of the network, what's happening on the network, the condition of the That's network, right. events on the network, and then being yep. able to take that, those um, events or triggers mm-hmm. and then put it into an intelligent control loop, right? That is correct. Um, yep. And I, I think that's not necessarily what, where you start with automation. Like you were saying, scripts right. can be pretty dumb. <laughs> you know, it's like a codification of simple yeah. instructions or logic, but exactly. that's logic is not necessarily intelligence, right? Scripts that's correct. And logic. That's correct. Yeah. Logic is allowing you to do the same thing in a consistent manner over and over again, probably faster, right? And with, with less errors. And the intelligence to understand, you know, the events and the KPIs that are measured and the metrics and to understand what that means in whatever context it is that you're, you're, you're looking at, right? Understand that the system failure is, is going to happen soon. Understand that SLA is going to be breached soon. You know, understand that capacity is going to be reached soon. Any of those things. And then, and then beyond that, to understand the steps that you have to take to mitigate those things or to correct those things, you know, in an appropriate time frame, right? And that's, that's where the intelligence comes in. And, um, and that closed right. loop is important, right? Because if you don't measure and you can't, you don't understand what your system goals are, right? Your, or your, your KPIs are, then you can't correct. Right, right. right. And, and, you know, the, the intelligence that you're talking about can be applied and is applied or can be applied depending on your maturity level um, right. in different zones. So one of the things that uh, I, that we wrote about, uh, NextCurve wrote about a long time ago. You, you recall the 5G autonomous? I, I, I do, edge, I do. Right? I do. And Excellent. we've already, yeah. yeah, we've already done a couple of pieces uh, related to that um, in collaboration here on Rethink. Yep. Um, but yeah, the, that the AI is applied in different ways. You know, we oftentimes talk generically about AI, you know, but I think there's different types of AI applications yeah. that are going to be important. And then there's also dependencies on data that you have to start to um, ma- mature in your system before you can start to build a, a higher orders of, let's say, autonomy, you know. That, that's and, right. Um, one of the things that I always tell folks when um, we talk about this topic of autonomous is that, you know, you need to think about the, you know, oftentimes we hear about the autonomous vehicle and the SAE levels of That's uh, autonomy. Well, That's auto- calling it the levels of autonomy is actually a misnomer, a mis- misconceptualization uh, con- of what that that framework actually represents. It's the levels of automation it's only levels three four and five that represent any degree of autonomous capability right and that that's sort of how we need to think about the network and how we evolve things that's correct and if and going back to the very first i don't know if it's the very first thing that you said but one of the first important things that you said is that you know, this is kind of a journey, right? It, it, it really, is. you have a roadmap that you have mm-hmm. to follow mm-hmm. uh, and you have to build these foundational capabilities that allow you to go from one level of automation to mm-hmm. the next and hopefully to this level of um, an autonomous network. And um, that's correct. That's correct. And yeah, the same thing with the SAE. I mean, the TM Forum, for instance, has done work around this as well. So they have the same right. autonomous networks level from, you know, no automation to fully autonomous network. You know, again, it's level five, right? Again, because yeah. we only get five fingers, I guess. So that's why we count five, right? So <laughs> level zero to level five, right? No fingers to five fingers. But yeah, the same thing. Beyond that, it, Not, it becomes a little too ridiculous. And then yeah, I mean, less it's than that. Fine. Yeah, you don't have enough yeah. uh, levels to have an interesting conversation. Yeah. I was wondering if we had four fingers, would it be a four stage? But anyway, so but <laughs> aside from that, but yes, yeah. the, the TM4 yeah. and, and the very smart people um, that that are working on this, um, yeah. you know, they define the, the different levels. And again, you are absolutely right in terms of you know, the the closed loop is you know in some situations is level two and then three becomes based on some of the you know l2 level two capabilities there's some awareness real time yeah. and five is fully autonomous right that's right, the end, right. right it looks at the closed loop automation across multiple services multiple right. domains right and and then it's able to look at the whole life cycle and it's able to to fix itself and and, and do a bunch of things right, right? so right. and we're definitely not there yet right yeah. i mean 
like the state of the art, even talking to some of the leading uh, vendors or the folks in the space, yeah. many of whom are involved with the TM forum. I mean, a lot of them are saying, yeah, well, you know, maybe L3, right? Level three, right? L level two, level three max. It's going to take a while to get to level four or five. And there's a lot of information yeah. that you point out. The data is important. Yeah. A lot of machine learning. Uh, the, the quality of machine learning is based on the ability to get the good data, right? Yeah. And the, understand what data you're working with. And I think we're still in process of actually doing that. So it's still quite a few years out before we get even close to L5, right? Maybe yeah, and, and it, it's entirely de dependent on um, the, inf the, the infrastructure that you're dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. Maturity, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. the level of technological yeah. fragmentation it and it, so it, it, there's no simple answer right and there certainly isn't a single uh, a singular path there's a generic let's say roadmap that you can maybe um suggest but for mm -hmm. each company uh, for each operator for each network it, it, it's just going to be a very very different um roadmap yeah. and journey um, yep you know it, it, it it's yeah no it is it absolutely is i think yeah. you know where we are right now um in terms of uh, data gathering and is certainly we're in the path of automation and that i think has very clear benefits very clear value it's, it's hard to argue with automation yeah, yeah. and even then we're, right. we're, we're we still have to do it i mean there's still work to be done right so right yeah. and, and i think from there then you define the KPIs, look at the closed loops, you know, first deal with small loops and then deal with bigger loops, right? I think that's some of the, the, the journey, right? In terms of, you know, how do we get there? Um, and then in the meantime, gather the data, right? And and start doing the machine learning, you know, again, small loops first, don't don't go for the big ones because that's complicated, but you yeah. get small wins along the way, right? In terms of the task right. to get there, understand the data, understand right. what the data is telling you, um, and then, from there, then you, you you work your way there. But we are seeing some um, early success in, in getting there. Um, and it's not fully autonomous, but yeah. it's sort of guided assistance, right? To right, human. right. Yeah, yeah, supervised. Uh, supervised. Well, you know, you're yeah. making a great point. So, it's, yeah. it, so it's, 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 it's helping, right? So they, so we're, we're seeing use in terms of reinforcement learning. We're yeah. seeing supervised learning, so tagging, you know, events, yeah. especially you know, trouble tickets, you know, things that help right. with group cost analysis, acceleration of troubleshooting. Yeah. Yeah. So we're seeing that in the SD-WAN uh, arena, yeah. we're seeing some of that. And also in the data center arena. Uh, so yeah. large data centers, um, uh, I was on the uh, web, web webinar um, and it was um, it was eBay and they're using some semblance of these closed loop systems and machine learning to uh, to maintain the data, data center networks. and. Um, and they're dealing with uh, not full failures, but you know, sort of sort of gray areas of brown failures, right? So sort of brownouts type situation, and they can spot it and predict it and see th issues around it already. So there's there's some value that we're seeing already uh, with the use of ML, and then obviously eventually you want it to fix itself before you even worry about it. Right. But, but right yeah. now they're getting value from just detecting it's going to happen. You know, sort of quick root cause troubleshooting it, and then once you know what the steps are to resolve it, and you build the automation to do it. Then you can close the loop, right? Then it becomes interesting, but but there are early early examples of it, um, and so far it's still domain by domain. I think back to your point, right? It's it's, yeah. it's you have domain by domain abilities, um, and some vendors are claiming that the learning models are cross can be cross domain, and I'm not certain yet. I think you know we'll see, right? Because it's yeah, there's there's right? yeah. 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 I mean, there's the the complexity there is really you're talking about um, cross domain, but each of those environment the each environment will present different problems, right? And so That's you correct. still need to go through the learning cycle, which uh, is yeah. is um, going to be an uh, it, 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 that that's typically a, a challenging transition period going it is, from it is, let's it say, is. a non-autonomous. Yeah. Uh, network Correct. to one that Correct. has basic autonomous capability, right? And then okay. as you add layer in more autonomous functions or capabilities, that learning cycle needs to continue. But you're you're um, you're touching on another really cool point, which is simulation and testing, right? Being able to simulate, test, and then maybe um, uh, you know drive model learning through simulation. 
uh, rather than having to deal with <laughs> yeah, that, that, you know, are... any kind of resultant I issues caused by AI <laughs> in production, right? Let's say baby AI. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I think, you know, you have to build environments, simulation environments. You have yeah. to do back testing of the algorithms against yeah. the system to see whether yeah. it, it works or not. Um, right. And and I think it, I think we're, we're not quite all the way there yet, but I think a lot of uh, companies are, are learning how to how to do it. No. Um, and even just the data gathering, right? I mean, no. I was, we were working with an MSP and and I said, so what are you troubleshooting while doing SD-WAN? But we're doing SD-WAN in low layers with fixed wireless access. And in that situation, you can look at signal strength, you get a good look, look at sort of layer two, layer one characteristics, right? And that's domain specific, right? Layer one, layer two characteristics are usually domain specific. And, and we're trying to figure out, like the humans can look at it and figure out what it means. Now I'm gonna teach the system you know what it means right at the same time so you know you, you have the events come in the data comes in and the human takes action and you tag it and say okay in this one this is what happened this is what we did and then over time hopefully it learns or it sees and of course you can do unsupervised learning you look at for anomalous behavior um, and, and warn around those things certainly you can do that and works quite well in security potentially uh, but for network failures and and, and performance issues um, in, and then root cause analysis of that and not seeing a lot of it yet right so but but yeah that, that, definitely that, yeah it's happening that, yeah. that's definitely the more challenging learning mm -hmm. that the system yep. will have to make yep so cool um now i wanted to move on to our next topic uh yeah. of discussion which is what is the criticality of autonomous infrastructure so um this might be um i don't know a, a little bit challenging <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know how prepared you are to address this one, but how critical is it to have autonomous infrastructure? Yeah, so um, I think oh, it comes down to a scale and management problem, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the reason why we all are interested in, uh, in autonomous, autonomous infrastructure uh, collectively is because we see a day where the infrastructure is scaled, is scaled out so much and we you know the optics would be incredible to, to deal with all those mm -hmm. and the belief is that if we can build some semblance of intelligence across these locations usually edge yeah. locations right far edge locations yeah. that these things can self-heal and self-diagnose and self-deal with whatever is going on mm -hmm. without humans getting involved and mm -hmm. or maybe getting involved later where at least the immediate problem has been dealt with right Right. And so if you look at the large scale networks and the number of base stations and you imagine that you have to have you know, networks and infrastructure at every base station or every tower or near every tower, then the hope is that, you know, when instead of dealing with the tens or hundreds of thousands of <laughs> locations, all of which maybe need some intervention, that yeah. they fix it themselves, right? That's, right? that's a scale problem. And so if you can get there uh, with autonomous infrastructure, then your OPEX costs ostensibly should be lower. Mm -hmm. um, your network should be more resilient. Um, it, the uptime should be better, right? So mm -hmm. that's that's the intention. I think that's why right. we're thinking about it, and that's yeah. why I know that at least the people that we, we work with who have strong interests in that autonomy element, right. that's what they're hoping for, right? That's the intention, right? Um, but but right. again, that's that's aspiration. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that aspiration is a is the operative word. And maybe even target state, because I think a lot of the way that we talk about autonomous infrastructure is more of target state. This is what we'd ultimately or ideally like to get out of autonomous infrastructure if we're yes. able to achieve a, a compelling and a level of maturity, right, um, for right. these capabilities. But I, I think one of I, I like your comments on scale. Uh, I, I just think that from a from if we were to sit there and um, now distinguish between automation and autonomous, mm -hmm. scale is really an automation play, right? I've yeah. always looked at um, autonomous as more of adaptive and optimized, mm -hmm. right? And so as right, you, right, but right. and you know, uh, so I'm agreeing with everything. I'm I'm just 
decomposing this stuff down a little yeah. bit. So I think I think the, the way maybe to right. look at it. So agreed. So yeah. I think the way to look at it and potentially and haven't tested this even with my own brain, right? But but fundamentally, <laughs> if you break it down to at scale, right? You yeah. have the you have your day zero, your day one, your day two problem, right? Yeah. And if you look at day zero as say design, day one as deploy, or day yeah. two as uh, you know sort of monitoring, management, and all that, right? Yeah. Depending on how you want to break it up. But fundamentally, in the deployment situation, deployment at scale requires automation. Right, right, right. right. Monitoring, management, maintenance at scale probably requires autonomy. Right. So if you break right. it up into yes. those two, yes. right, then I yes. think that's the way to look at it. Right, right. And, 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 and no, this is really good. By the way, for the audience, this is, we didn't script any of this stuff. This is an organic conversation that we're having right now. But I, I think you're making a huge point huge huge point here um that when we look at um moving toward autonomous obviously automation there's a, a huge requirement there uh, as far as um uh, a, a prerequisite which is our next topic but well, i guess we'll we'll kind of address it here but there's really two uh, you know uh, automation and autonomy are two maturity cycles that you have to deal with. And you can realize some certain foundational uh, autonomous capabilities early on. And your whole point on um, on being able to detect, let's say, anomalous behavior or, or event, you know, events, being able to do certain things predictively based on just telemetry that you're gathering, gathering off the network, the, that cognitive function is something you can establish early on and blend with whatever it is that you're doing on the automation side which it's its own issue right and challenge and roadmap and um and and so uh, you know the way that we really need to think about the autonomous network or evolving toward it is is kind of treating these things as um, dependent, but also parallel, um, you know, uh, maturity cycles, if you will. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that that's absolutely right. Um, and because I, I don't think, think that's what SAE, <laughs> the SAE model, really suggests. Right? Yeah, no, it's, I think. Yeah, I think you know. That, maybe there needs. SAE. We need more fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe we do ten, ten stage. Yeah, yeah, there might have to be. Well, there's, there's five for automation, and then there's five, five yeah, for, for, for autonomy. For autonomy, right? I mean, but, but again, right back to I think, I think fundamentally, yeah. I think it's a, it's a goal that that we all want yeah. to get to, right? And you know, Absolutely. day zero design is best practices and all that, and day one is deployment, which without automation you can't do it at scale, mm -hmm. and day two there's no way you can manage it at scale if you don't have autonomy at some point because it's yeah. going to go beyond what your team can do or handle, and right. the uptime you can't maintain the SLAs, you know, right. there's just no way, right? There's just no way. Right, right, especially the dynamic functions, right? Things that are not static or That's simple. Correct. That's correct. Uh, it, it, you know, especially orchestration. You know, yeah. that that's going to require a, a deal of intelligence in order to scale, which is why that's you right. have the intelligent. Yeah, <laughs> the I mean, that's what, yeah, the, <laughs> right. exactly. So intelligence is important, yeah. you know, that I think. And and you're right. I mean, at some point we have that that sort of uh, uh, smart, dynamic workload placement. You know, how do you do that? Yeah. How does it figure out where to put it in the right way? Yeah. Is, there's no human you can't have a human involved in saying okay you want an sla let me look at it and let me go back to day zero and design and think about it then yeah. i automate the deployment of it and then i go manage it i mean the thing has to be on its own right yeah it's, yeah it's, it's, absolutely it's absolutely yeah. so yeah. Let, let's move on to our next bit here we touched a little bit on this uh but a prerequisites and uh, to intelligent automation or uh, autonomous Automation, autonomous automation, and beyond. Um, what are what are some of your thoughts there? I mean, what what are those things that need to come together in a network in terms of capabilities in order to start moving the needle on automation and the path to uh, autonomous? Yeah, I think I think part of it is just so. There's a couple of elements in there, right? So certainly you can do automation just by having people who can code and program but to do it at scale you want to do it in the way that you have a devops you know um, workflow mm -hmm. um, that allows you to capture things at scale um, mm -hmm. 
whatever look at it more like code development than than mm. just you know trying to write a bunch of scripts that you tie together so i think mm. there's a coding mindset or a development mindset a devops mindset i think that's a yeah. mindset is important mindset is very important right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, second one is to define the right level of abstraction, right? In terms uh -huh. of, you know, what level are you automating at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of models are you going to do? And how, how to keep the model and the modeling consistent across the organization, across right. your devices, right. across your network. So there's a model element to it. Mm -hmm. right? um, so if you have the pipeline and you have the model that, that you're doing, um, then the other element around that is, you know, so you can deploy, so you get a pipeline. and but you got to watch and monitor. So you got to do that monitoring, right? And what are the KPIs, what metrics are you measuring? Yeah. You have to define the, the ability to understand, well, I guess you have to understand what these things mean. So as the metrics come back, you know, what do they mean, right? Yeah. yeah. How do you yeah. deal with them, right? So those actions, that intelligence, yeah. you have to figure out. And that's part of the data, data gathering as well, because yeah. that's what you're going to need eventually for autonomy. Because right, the same right. as the K KPIs you're measuring, you're now going to put into ML and start doing your training, right? Um, yeah. And then yeah. from there, then you start playing around with ML and, and seeing, you know, what the data tells you, what you right. can do right? step right. by step, right? So, right. so I think it's just, it's basically first static programmatic stuff, and then later on using some of those KPIs to adaptive, and then finally the system will tell will tell you what to do, right? Um, yeah. Hopefully. That's the yeah, point. yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, the things that I would just add to that, uh, that list would be, um, you know, going back to this whole idea of, um, of, you know, um, the control loop, right, and building capabilities mm -hmm. around that. Um, no, I agree with you on, on the scripting stuff, getting some of that automation uh, stuff down, having a development team and and being able to have some semblance of, uh, you know, more, uh, let's say, up to date uh, development lifecycle, getting that CICD, you know, DevOps yeah. kind of uh, thing yeah. going on all really important yeah. uh, but I think in terms of capabilities things foundational that uh, that operators are going to need is uh, is number one that building out that uh, cognitive piece right yeah. um, so whether it's just having you know sniffers on uh, on your network agents mm -hmm. that give you um, a visibility to yep. things that are happening on a network, whether it's mm -hmm. for security purposes or just, you know, service management, what have you, uh, that really being one of the, the foundational uh, things is building that sort of uh, sensory capability and then mm -hmm. layering on the cognitive on top of that. Um, the other thing is, I mean, you mentioned data. Uh, the one thing that I would add there is that um, the data has to be quality, and that means a lot of things, right? And number one, it, you also hinted at uh, the fact that there needs to be some um, aggregation of the data and then um, massaging of the data so that there's yeah. A, yeah. a harmonized understanding of what this there is data data normalization right, right? they, they yeah, normalize it with the full etl process right historically right but right. but still but having yeah right but if you etl doesn't yeah. even matter if the data is all over the place right yeah the, the, and then the, the, it's the, in the, silos uh it's not um you know machine readable <laughs> it's not yeah, it, easy you got to tag it categorize right. it if you're doing supervised right if you want right. it to be diligent you got to build your data lakes you could right. have yeah. The data management, data life cycle, um, yeah. you know, that, that, those things have to be built. So right, which, which is tough in a lot of uh, network yeah. environments, right? Oh, yeah, and, it is. And then the other thing that uh, that really I think is, is a, a significant issue is the challenge of, or it's a challenge, is systems integration. It's getting mm -hmm. to a certain level of system integrations at certain levels or domains. Uh, yep. So that data can be captured, the velocity of data is consistent across each of the domains, and and, and that all kind of contributes to this idea of having um, quality data. 
right? Um, I don't want to say data is everything. Uh, I just, for some reason that, you know, makes me feel, uh, uh, but. <laughs> you're going to say, come on, Landon, you're going to say data is. The no, thing. data is, it's important, but it's not the most important thing because crap data is just That's crap, right. Now, right? quality data. Um, yeah. Good data yeah. is important. You can find the data. You can right, find right. Not all data is important, but the quality not stuff all is. all data is equal. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> and then, then you know that that we've said it already a couple of times is that it's starting to build out that uh, closed loop um, automation framework. Mm -hmm. That's the basis for you to start to build out that autonomous yeah. capability. So, I mean, I, I think I think that's a pretty comprehensive list of stuff prerequisites no, prerequis to consider, right? And that was kind of like it's, oh. it's a lot of work, right? So I think you yeah. Know thinking about it now if you tie it right so yeah i know when you when you think through uh design build you know the whole implementation thing this stuff is not as easy as some of the brochures make it no, out it, it always looks easy and even <laughs> as we write a report it, you know it makes it sound yeah like that one step could be a lot of work right just mm. in one step yeah well you know going from one stage to the next could be a mm -hmm. ton of work so mm -hmm. hey um Let's talk about topic four, which is how do operators prioritize value along the path to autonomy? So not talking about the network, but uh, well, yeah, sort of talking about the network, but in terms of value, whether it's operational or like in terms of monetization, if we can even you know, stretch our imagination that far from the network. But what, what are some of the prior, uh, you know, the, the ways that uh, you might recommend to operators to prioritize value as they, you know, build out their networks or mature their networks toward autonomy? Yeah, so I think, you know, some of the things that, uh, so I think automation, you know, from a value perspective, if you look at, you know, you, you get back, you get back OPEX savings, right? That That's, right. I think that, but the, 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 there's no, I would say there's, there's not no, no harm. It's you absolutely have to do it. I don't think it's a choice, right? So, so you, automation, you know, the early steps you have to do, right? You don't get the scale, you don't get the opex efficiencies otherwise, and you can. And I think that's one. The second thing you do get with automation is actually a time to market, um, and a customer experience benefit that you could monetize somehow at least makes you more competitive. Which is that if you build the right level of automation. Then you can enable things like self-service from a customer perspective, right? You can provision services a lot faster than you could previously. And so when yeah. you cut your time to market, you know, from weeks to days to minutes, right? There is value to be captured in there, right? right? And right, how you monetize right, it, right. it you know, depends on the situation, but certainly, you know, autonomy has value. And I think back to what you're saying, you do the closed loop thing and next, right? So you get, you got an automation going, you got a scripts going, and then now you build a that closed loop capability. And what does that mean? Well, that, that means that there's value to be captured because you have maybe better SLAs, better uptime as a result of being able to monitor and fix issues much faster. Mm -hmm. um, and as well, you have the OPEX saving, right? Yeah. So I think there are steps along the way, even in the journey itself, where where you, you can extract significant value. And I think it makes sense even step by step on an ROI basis, you don't have to look at the whole path, right? You don't have to say, when I get the autonomy, right. I get this full ROI. I mean, that's yeah. not realistic. And you yeah. know, no board's going to sit there and say, I will wait 10 years while you monetize, when you, monetize the, you know, when you get your ROI from autonomy. Yeah. The steps along the way, right? Each stage of that um, journey, you know, mm -hmm. level one, two, three, four, five, six, up to our 10 levels, right? Every step, I believe that there is value to be yeah. achieved whether OPEX savings um, or faster time to market yeah. or better customer experience or maybe new services, right? right? Or, um, or maybe even the ability to trial services faster, right? And, and I think all of those can bring value to an operator, right? And, and not just not an operator, but anyone who operates infrastructure. Yes. Yeah. And so there's a couple of things that I wanted to just highlight from your your really insightful list there is number one, um, the OPEX, a lot of that is going to come from automation. Um, 
right? Yeah. Automating things, yes. basically um, taking people out of the equation, being mm -hmm. able to realize certain types of um, operational scaling that might not be possible with mm -hmm. manual management or orchestration. Um, but the other thing I, I think doesn't get talked about a lot because we talk about OPEX, reducing OPEX quite a bit, right? One of the things that I think it could be a huge value, especially during the automation phase, as you were describing it, it kind of dawned on me, is you can dramatically improve the economic um, scaling of your front end, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, your um, support operations, your customer service operations, the back end. Um, yeah, that's right. The back end automation that can be pushed forward and mm -hmm. so you you yes. can scale your op front end operations uh, with much better economics and the reason why i don't use opex there is i don't want to suggest that you are uh, you are necessarily reducing your head count it's yeah. you are a, your your resources yeah. per yeah. head can yeah. do a lot more and they don't spend as much time doing you know, uh, mundane tasks Correct. like, you know, Correct. provisioning, uh, you know, sending out a SIM or, you yeah. know, provisioning no, the high, yeah. device, you, you know, the like high value stuff. Absolutely. right. But I think that's an important mindset. That is, that's right. That's right. Difference, because mm -hmm. we always talk about OPEX. I've, you know, we don't hear people talking about how do we scale out our capabilities okay. on the front end. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, no. I agree. That's a good point. The the, the customer experience, um, yeah. beyond self service portal, but high, you know, freeing you up from a customer care perspective to to work on the high value stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I experienced that myself. I mean, I, I just you know just using oh. a certain service right to order a sim right on yeah the, yeah not on the carrier or on MVNO versus going to the store, or, you know, you know, fighting with them to figure out the SIM and you know, wanting to get the upcharge for 30 right. bucks or 20 bucks for SIM. And right. you know, just why can't it be automated? What can I do in the app next? Yeah. This, why do you have to this, mail it to me? <laughs> or eSIM, Stuff like right? That, just right. Yeah. envision me right yeah. now right? with eSIM, right? So well, they, have, they have to send you the barcode. <laughs> well, they just give me the QR code. I'll scan it on, on my screen. Code, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and some of them do that. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not going to name carriers here, right? So, but but let's just say that uh, similar networks, very different experience depending on how yeah. how much automation is built in the system, and automation sometimes is well, there's no human contact. But I don't want human contact. Yeah. I want to get my job done quickly. And right yeah. now, I just want a new sim. I want to onboard a new phone. I don't right. want to talk to someone for an hour. I mean, right. yeah, sure, maybe I enjoy talking to the person for in one hour. Yeah. I'd rather just click a button and in less than 30 seconds, ready to go. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yes, you're right. I mean, I just experienced that. So I, I totally, yeah. you know, I back your point on that one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, no, it's been a really great discussion. And so um, I really appreciate you coming on board here and uh, spending time with uh, me to talk about these really important um topics I, I think it's important because i mean i, I i've watched I, i've watched and been involved in so many discussions around automation and autonomy mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was kind of cool to have that um chat with you even before we jumped on here um a few days ago um mm -hmm. when we were kind of brainstorming what we might talk about and this is a really really interesting i think an important one that yep. we've uh, tackled. So again, thank you for your time. So in closing here, uh, Roy, um, you want to take a moment to let our audience know how they can reach out to you and find out more about Avid Think? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, just check out the website, Avid Think, A-V-I-D-T-H-I-N-K.com and you'll find our research um, and a couple of, of uh, links to some of the more recent things we've done there. So, um, and feel free to reach out to us. Um, yep. you know, we'll answer your questions if we can. If we can't, we'll direct them to Leonard. So. <laughs> yeah, and I highly recommend our audience to go and check out um, the white papers that Avid Think has published. Really great stuff. Um, appreciate it very much. 
Roy. And to our listeners and viewers, thanks for joining us. Please subscribe to our YouTube and Apple podcast channels. The easiest thing to do is subscribe to our research portal and media center at www.next-curve.com. Uh, it's a great one-stop shop for all Next Curve research content and media. And you will be notified when we publish new articles and content such as this webcast with the illustrious uh, Roy Chua of Avid Thing. So, yeah. always a pleasure, <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> Until Thank next you. time, hey, be safe, everyone. Stay healthy. We'll see you next time. Visit us at www.next-curb.com.